G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel Bonsai Works, I'm David. Um, today I'm going to take you through a history of this big radiator pine of mine. Now, luckily enough I have the I have photographic history of this tree from the 19, late 1990s, of how it's come along and how it's developed. I wish I had a better background to get it all in, but at the moment this is what it looks like um, in spring 2021, September here. Um, Radiata pine is similar to Monterey pine, I believe, in the in the southern hem in the northern hemisphere. So our radiata pine, these are pretty much almost like weeds, and they grow everywhere here in Australia. Um, obviously, used for the timber industry, I believe. Um, one of the main issues with these is they're long, long um, needles they get, and it gets a very hairy look. They call it a very ragged, hairy look. Uh, this tree has come along quite well. Last year we had a terrible summer. We didn't have really very hot days and warm sunny days and, and so on. And I found this tree didn't do the flush of growth like the black pines normally do. Most years I treat this the same as black pines. Some years I can't because it doesn't push the second flush of candles. Um, but now you can probably kind of make out how nice and full this tree is. It's really starting to fill out quite Look, it's almost a full all the way around. If I spin it all the way around, it's a full canopy tree. At the back, I'm trying to trying to get more sun into the back, into that area to fill it out a bit more. Um, it's a very, 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 very good tree. I mean, the only problem with that is I can't fit it in the car, so I can never get it in an exhibition. Um, it just won't fit. It's too tall. It's like it's I'm I'm six foot, and it's pretty much well, idea almost the same height as me from. Well, from the table we can kind of work out how big it is what probably one and a half meters one, one meter one and a half or with the with the pot um, one to 1.2 maybe but um it's it's a, it's a real beauty in terms of what it looks like what it accentuates the big beautiful tree I'll do some close-ups of it but then I'll take you through shortly a history of what photos I've got of the tree and I'll talk you through all these photos um, very important to keep a good history of a tree. You know, if you, if you, one thing with great with YouTube for me is that I keep a history with all the videos that I load and put up and so on. So I've always got a history. But before then, I used to try and take photos of trees. Um, obviously, trees go and go and come from your collection, but this one's been always here from about the early 2000s, I believe. I picked this up. I can't remember exactly. Probably, I probably was only a couple of years into um, my um, into bonsai, and I, and I bought this off Barry. And it was probably early 2000s, and now 20 years later uh, or so, it's still with me, and I really love this tree. Um, one thing I one thing I should also tell you is this tree. Probably the last time I repotted it, it was probably over 10 years ago. I, I tell you, I don't repot this tree anymore, really. Um, and one thing I did find, it doesn't need it. Look at it; it's really healthy, strong. It's actually getting quite nice, small small candles, uh, and the needles are getting. I mean, there's still a few here and there that are all raggedy uh, and so on. That's why it looks a bit messy still because it's early spring and there's, there's growth all over the place. But I thought I'd take you through the history of this tree. So anyway, I haven't repotted it for well over 10 years. When they get when trees get this old, I don't think they need to be repotted very often at all. Um, unless you want to change the pot, that's pretty much my my theory at the moment. I think repotting can be um, is probably used too much. Um, you only need to do it. If the tree needs it that's what i think anyway now these days and i'm finding the, the trees will respond accordingly as well so anyway let me go through the history of the tree and then we'll come back to what it looks like okay so this is in 1995 it was still pretty raw and um hadn't been worked on yet probably just dug up from somewhere or grow from seed i can't remember exactly where it was anymore but it was in my collection um this is lee wilson come down from sydney to melbourne did a workshop with Barry on this tree um, at the Bonsai Northwest Melbourne Club. Uh, um, there's Barry, uh, the aftershot of the tree, after him and Lee worked on it, wired it, etc. So that's what it looks like. This is a you know about a, month, a year on from there. So the workshop was probably 1998. This is probably 1999. How it's all going, filling out nicely. Then I acquired it probably early 2000. This is probably 2002 at the moment. Looks very ordinary at the moment. I was still learning bonsai. I wasn't really, wasn't really experienced yet, but it was nice to have a big tree like this in the collection. It looks really good. 
2002, I believe this photo is from, coming along little bit by little bit. I'm still learning how to wire the trunks. The trunks there, the trunks starting to fatten up a little bit as well. This is now the foliage doing really well in 2003. Filling out nice and healthy. Good strong tree. Uh, this was in a show probably around the 2004 mark um, at the Bonzo Northwest Melbourne again at the Yarraville Club we were there. Now 2000, I think this was 2005, 2006, it's starting to really nicely fill out. Still again learning, I'm using guy wires now to pull down branches. This is 2008 show I believe at the at the Arrival Club. The tree was on stage being displayed like that. A bit whitewashed with the photo, but unfortunately is what it is. Now this is much later, this is probably 2012, 13. Uh, I had a bit of a period where I personal issues that I didn't do much work on. I just want to show you the girth of the, the base of the trunk. Oops. And how fissured it is. One of the beauties of um, radiata or even black pine. See how much, see how there's big fissures in the air of the craggly bark. And the branches are starting to develop the old look. Pretty much goes pretty much most of the way up the tree. And it keeps going up towards the top. Moving in the top here, you can see it's all crag it up. So sorry I don't have the background, I moved the tree before I um, was able to show you this, but um there you go. Love the old trunk. And the bar is doing alright too. Here's a close-up, I said, of all the foliage pads I wanted to do for you guys. See, quite quite nice. You can see how the nice new candles, but you can also see the hairiness of it. Hairiness of radiata pines. Coming up towards the top of the tree, you see it's quite heavy full foliage, but it's a really nice, healthy tree. See how old... There's a bit more view of the trunk and a better look. And the girth of that trunk in there. There's a few leaves here and there, but that's what the tree looks like now. Feel that really nicely. So that was that was a nice history there of what I, what you can see in photographs of the tree, um, and a nice shout out to Lee Wilson if he ever watches this video. So I've still got the tree Lee, and if you still watch him, if you still watch these videos, I know you guys in Sydney would know Lee, and a lot of Melbourne, a lot of Australia would know Lee Wilson. Um, so yeah, you can see his young face there on, on the photos um, in in, the, in that in the when he when he did a workshop with Barry on this tree. In the early, you know, late 1990s. Um, but anyway, this tree. All I wanted to do was take take you through that whole, you know, history of the tree. It's, it's great to keep keep records, but this is what the tree is. I mean, I'll always keep refining this tree, keep working on it. This tree sits in full sun, absolute 100% full sun all the time. There's no, it's not in a shady spot, and it's actually responding really well. As I mentioned to you, I'm trying to encourage the back to get more um, stronger because the front's really nice and strong, size top. One thing with most ball pines that do this anyway, they're very apical dominant, so they all all the strength is really in the top of the tree. They get all the sun, so you've got to really get stuck into the top because when you when you decandle a needle pluck, you really give it a give it a good whack. And down lower, I don't do it as hard, so that's one thing I, I'm trying to balance out the growth of this tree. And the lower half is coming back nicely, still not as strong as the top half, but it takes time. Um, Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed that history of this tree. It's 20 plus years that um, it's been recorded, so it's really good to have that, that history um, of a tree. So keep clicking on your cameras and videos and make sure you keep records of your trees. All right, thanks for watching guys, uh, see you soon.